Seedless fruits are a commercial success, as no one likes to have to deal with pesky seeds when they're eating. But how does a plant grow if it doesn't have seeds? I'm guessing they have some help. Most seedless fruits that you see in the supermarket aren't natural. Scientists grow them in a lab. They've developed them from plants whose fruits normally contain a large number of big seeds. The scientists start by taking a trimming from a branch and then mix it with a bunch of nutrients. Then they put it into the soil where a new plant grows, minus the seeds. Watermelons are a different story, though. Some watermelons are naturally seedless, and we call these tetraploids. When a tetraploid watermelon is crossed with a regular seeded one, it produces a new seedless watermelon. The sky is blue, as our air throws blue light from the sun across the sky, which then reaches our eyes. This is because the air is made up of many tiny molecules, mostly nitrogen. When the sunlight hits the nitrogen molecules, it turns into blue light. This blue light gets scattered across the air and bounces around in the sky. That makes the sky look blue to our eyes. Only female bees can sting, as males don't have the right anatomy. They can only sting once, because the female honeybee stinger is made up of two barbed lancets. Once the stinger goes into something, it can't be pulled out. The stinger is attached to the bee's digestive tract, which means that when the bee tries to remove the stinger, its entire digestive system, muscles, and nerves are pulled out. That's why it takes guts to sting. Literally. It seems it would be much easier if planes flew in a straight line. In fact, the circumference of the Earth is much greater at the equator than near the poles. This means that curving toward the poles is a shorter distance than just flying in a straight line. It takes 365 and a quarter days for the Earth to orbit the Sun. Because our calendar years only have 365 days, we add an extra day every four years to make up for the difference. This is why we have leap years every four years, as they include this extra day. Starfish are able to regrow arms if they detach from the central body. They can even take it one step further and grow an entirely new body from an arm. They can store nutrients they need in the arm until they're able to grow a new mouth. They have enough cells that can turn themselves into different organs and tissue when a limb is severed. Now, wouldn't that be handy? When your phone gets down to 1%, it seems to stay on for longer than expected. This is because your battery percentage is just an estimate, and the phone doesn't actually know how much charge is left. Cactuses, or cacti, can survive in the desert with basically no water thanks to three main features. First, they have long roots that go deep inside the soil so they can absorb water. Second, they have spines instead of leaves so that they don't lose water that would evaporate off leaves. Finally, their stems are covered in a thick, waxy layer that keeps water trapped inside them. Still, it's better if you don't hug a cactus. They can get prickly sometimes. Bluetooth works without wires, as it uses radio waves to send information like your radio, TV, and cell phone. Like radio, each device operates on one of many frequency channels. If two devices want to link, they pick a channel randomly. If it's already taken, they switch to one of the others. This is why they don't interfere with each other. They're only short-range transmitters, though, which explains why your devices won't carry your signals too far. The police lights are red and blue, so the drivers can easily see them at any time of day. Red lights are the easiest to spot during the day, and blue lights are the clearest at night. Humans naturally float in the Dead Sea because of the concentration of salt in the water there is very high. That makes the water super dense. It's like molecules that are closely compacted, so nothing can break through. Humans are less dense, physically. That's why we stay on the surface of the water. If you put a cucumber near a cat, it's likely to jump as if it's watching the scariest movie. This is probably down to the cucumber looking a bit like a snake. It turns on an inherent flight reflex that makes the cat bolt. And please just take my word for it and don't scare your kitty with the fruit we all think is a vegetable. Now, this may come as a shock to some, but each dog gives off a unique smell from behind, which passes on vital information to other dogs. 
They can determine whether they have met each other before just by the smell of their bums. This is why they do it every time they see a fellow pup. It's like an ID card for dogs. We say hang up the phone, although all we do is click a button because old phones used to have two parts, a base and a receiver. To end a call, people used to hang up the receiver onto the base. It's a similar story why we say dial a number. Old phones used to have a rotating dial, which you'd have to turn to call a number. Wow, suddenly I feel old. School buses are yellow, as it was found to be the most visible color. It reduces the risks of accidents and also helps passengers catch the bus. It's also this color, as black lettering on yellow proved to be the easiest to read in semi-darkness and from long distances. People in the UK drive on the left side of the road, not the right. This dates back to the 18th century London, when cars could drive on any side of the road. Traffic jams and collisions started happening a lot, so a law was passed saying that all traffic going over London Bridge must keep to the left. This rule then spread to all parts of the UK. Get equipped for any season with brand new Brightside merch. Click the link and grab your print. Around 85% of people are right-handed. The left side of our brain is the one responsible for planning and execution. Each side of the brain controls actions on the opposite sides of the body. So the left side of your brain controls the right side of your body. When you use tools or write, you use the left side of your brain. Is that clear? I'm confused. Birds don't get electrocuted sitting on a power line because they have both feet on the wire and no circuit is created. The electricity travels along the wire instead of through the bird. This only works if the amount of electricity flowing through the wire stays the same. If the voltage in the wire is changing, it's a different story. But birds are so small they can't really store much electrical charge. This means that even if electricity did flow through them, the charge would be way too small to shock them. Which also explains why birds, when shopping, prefer to charge than pay cash. The Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans have an invisible barrier that stops them from mixing. The water in them has different densities, chemical makeup, and salt levels. You can see that just by looking at them as they're each a completely different color. The image on the Save button on your Word document represents a floppy disk. They were a popular way of storing and saving data in the 90s, but now they're mostly forgotten. Boy, I'm really feeling old. Roosters crow in the morning as they have their own internal alarm clock that helps them anticipate sunrise. They need to know when the sun will rise so they can get a head start on their daily chase for food and defend their territory. Roosters also like to doodle on paper, which is where cock-a-doodle-doo came from. Eh, just kidding. Your dog might be eating grass for a reason. It needs roughage like grass in its diet so it can get fiber, which helps digestion. If pups don't have enough, they might not be able to digest food properly. Tractors have big back wheels so that they can pull any weight behind them without tipping. The big wheels also have a large surface area, which helps to stop grass and soil below from being compacted. Dogs don't just wag their tails when they're happy. They use their tails to communicate and express how they're feeling to other animals. It shows a range of emotions, from nervousness to excitement. And the grass is green as it produces a bright pigment called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll absorbs blue light and red light, but reflects green light, hence the color of your lawn. You ever wondered why potato chips have those yummy, crunchy waves? Hmm, imagine you're with friends watching a film and you're eating chips. Would you prefer to dip non-ruffled chips or a ruffled one? Non-ruffled ones cannot handle the weight of the sauce and break down. Bam! You have sauce all over your white t-shirt. So, ruffled chips win. Ruffled chips also give you a better mouthfeel. Potato chips have a prominent oil taste, which decreases the potato taste. And you might have fingers oil covered. Where's the fun in that? So, what do you prefer, ridges or regular potato chips? Barcodes made our lives so much easier. But do you know how they work? Zebra lines are the keys here. 
Barcodes are read using a scanner. The scanner has a laser that detects the pattern. The laser reads the barcode. The barcode absorbs some light and the rest is reflected. The computer can make sense of those dots, lines, and numbers on a barcode. Imagine black and white lines as zeros and ones. Black observes the light and white reflects it. This rule applies here. Black parts of the ones and white parts that reflect the lights are zeros. The scanner sees the white sections, not the black parts. Post-its are our friendly reminders to visit the dentist or a scheduled meeting. Be sure to hang them on the wall firmly. We've been using post-it notes wrong this whole time. You're not supposed to peel it off from the bottom because this creates a crease in the paper. The note won't hold on to the surface for long. Take it off from the side. It'll stick more powerfully. Cloud-like and sweet. The one and only cotton candy. It's irresistible, especially for young people. Too much sugar is bad for the teeth. Everyone's heard this phrase from their dentist. Surprise, the inventor of cotton candy is a dentist. So, cotton candy was invented in 1895 by John C. Wharton, a candy maker, and William Morrison, a dentist. They named their product Fairy Floss. It's a cool name, by the way. They sold thousands of cotton candy at the St. Louis World's Fair in 1904. Cotton candy is still with us, showing up in amusement parks, and dentists still care for people with tooth decay. Some things never change. Do you love a lollipop? Why are there tiny holes in it? Those two holes in a lollipop stick may be used as a simple whistle. But they're there to hold the candy in place. The stick is dipped in the liquid syrup. It flows into the holes, solidifies, and surrounds the stick. A life-changing invention is a refrigerator, but not everybody knows it has a dark story behind its door. The Refrigerator Safety Act was launched in August 1956 to prevent young people from being trapped inside a household refrigerator. The refrigerators used to have an external latch that would shut the refrigerator door when it was not in use. It can only be opened from the outside. You can relax. After this regulation, household refrigerators were manufactured to be opened from the inside. Moving on from the kitchen to the bathroom. Using the toilet while scrolling down the Instagram feed is taken for granted. Guess what? More people in the world have phones than toilets. According to a UN report, billions of people lack access to a toilet, especially areas in South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. The number of mobile phone owners outnumber those with proper plumbing and sanitized toilets. Also, scientists have found that cell phones carry 10 times more bacteria than most toilet seats. So yeah, you might want to sanitize your phone after watching this video. Do you use FaceTime or Skype to talk to each other worldwide? It could be for a chat, a meeting, or something else. The webcam technology was born with a very reasonable goal, though. In 1993, researchers at the Computer Science Department at the University of Cambridge set up a system to see if the coffee pot was empty or not. Yes, you heard it right. Researchers needed coffee to fuel their brains, as many of us do. They get up from their chairs, go to the coffee pot, and find it empty. Instead of making sure that someone makes a fresh coffee, they wired up a system. The system would stream the images of the room where the coffee pot was kept. At that time, it was three pictures taken per minute. It's more than enough to see if the pot has coffee in it or not. Thanks to the researchers for not getting up from their chairs. And for another tiny thing, coming up with this brilliant idea. Do you buy white eggs or brown eggs? What's the difference besides the color? Since brown eggs tend to cost you more, you might think that something in them makes the prices a bit higher. Nope, the color of the eggshell doesn't affect its nutrition or quality. Both eggs are healthy. Brown eggs cost more because the hens that lay them need more feed. It's more pricey to raise them than the white egg hens. The cost is reflected onto the consumer. There is a hole at the handle of some kitchen pots and pans. We mostly use this hole to place the kitchen utensil vertically on a cabinet door. They have a secondary use. Imagine you're cooking multiple dishes to make a feast for the family. The kitchen counter is full of stuff. 
you have a hard time finding a place for the gravy sauce spoon. You can place the spoon in the hole on the edge of the saucepan handle. It will stay there safely until you decide to stir the sauce again. Not every spoon fits into the hole. It might easily slide to the floor. Better to have a test run where the spoon is clean. Imagine you have a takeaway of noodles with an extra topping on your way home. You recently moved and all the plates are in the boxes. You struggle with this noodle box. The toppings are stuck at the bottom. The sauce didn't mix evenly either. We've missed out on an easier way to eat from the takeout boxes. They can be flat and serve as plates. You take the edges of the paper out and open it up. There you go. Now you have a plate. The best part is you don't have to clean it up afterwards. Did you know that a tomato is not a veggie, but a fruit? So is an avocado. Watermelon is actually a berry. There's more to that. Peanuts are not in the nuts family. They're different from almonds and cashews. Peanuts grow pods under the soil. They're harvested like potatoes. Their upper parts are like bushes. These tasty ciders are not classified as nuts since they grow under the ground, not on a tree. They get pulled up from the soil like carrots. Next time you eat peanuts in a friend circle, you can mention this new fact you heard. Or it can be an icebreaker when you see someone eating peanuts. Classifying food as fruit or a vegetable is a tricky business. Do you know who invented t-shirts? In 1904, the Cooper Underwear Company prepared an ad and introduced its new product with before and after photos. It was referred to as an undershirt. The slogan was, no safety pins, no buttons, no needle, no thread. As the name revealed, they were worn under the clothes. One day, it was announced that sailors should wear undershirts with no buttons under their uniforms. T-shirt love spread like pollen at a park on a spring day. Soon, thousands of men started wearing them. Though T-shirts go back to the 19th century, now we have all adjusted to the comfort of our cozy T-shirts. Do you also wear T-shirts like the sailors? Hey, can you speak up? I just ate an entire pizza. That's because after eating a hearty meal, our hearing tends to be a bit less sharp. During digestion, most of our bloodstream is directed toward the stomach, which takes away a bit from all the other organs. So, next time you want to go listen to your favorite band at a live concert, make sure to eat a lighter meal to keep your ears pitch perfect. On top of our stomach and left kidney, we have a magical organ that can grow back if we remove a part of it. Our liver can regenerate itself by making new cells called heptocytes. They begin to multiply once the liver is damaged. The seriousness of that damage defines if it can regenerate completely and the amount of time it takes to do so. Ever wondered what's worse for your body? No sleep or no food? Turns out, the lack of sleep is more dangerous. That's because if you don't rest, your body becomes exposed to a lot more risks. After 24 hours without any shut-eye, you can start to have memory problems and find it difficult to concentrate. At just 17 hours without sleep, you start to feel tired and groggy, irritable, tense, and more emotional. Ah! I need a nap. Your pain receptors also become more sensitive, which means everything hurts a bit more than it should. Oh, and it also affects your hearing, too. What? On the other hand, you can be well into your 24-hour period with no food before your body realizes you've stopped eating. In the first 8 hours, you just keep digesting the last meals you had. After those first hours, you start to use stored fats for energy. Not eating for more than 24 hours means that your body will start eating away at its own protein, which means you literally start to lose muscle. Rainwater isn't always safe to drink. It can sometimes hold harmful bacteria and viruses. Also, in heavily polluted locations, it may even meet other harmful materials. Some communities out there do depend solely on rainwater as their primary source of hydration. But does rainwater have any other health benefits? Not really, according to current studies. Some of those risky substances may be removed from rainwater if you boil it. But it's best to stick to the safer side and only drink water from sources that are 100% safe for human consumption. 
Now, we produce sweat mostly to regulate our body temperature and for some added moisture, like the one we need in the palms of our hands for a better grip. But sweat doesn't just show up on our skin. It comes out of around 5 million pores on our bodies. We're literally stepping on a quarter of our bones each day. We have just over 200 bones in our body, but about a quarter of those are in a very small surprising area – our feet. Since we have 26 bones in each foot, we end up with literally 52 in both. Now, our eyes produce tears for many reasons, like protecting themselves from infection or clearing up debris, such as smoke and dust, or when your baby done you wrong. But the number of tears we produce is quite surprising – up to 30 gallons per year. That's almost enough to fill a bathtub. Wow, that is heartbreaking. Our blood pressure wakes up hours before we do. That's because in the morning, the body produces a bunch of hormones like adrenaline and noradrenaline. They help give us the energy boost we need during our morning hours, but they also increase our blood pressure, which is usually higher between 6 a.m. and noon. During the night, since we should technically sleep and perform no physical activity, our blood pressure drops down by up to 20%. Speaking of our vital fluid, our blood accounts for about 10% of our total body weight. We tend to think of our body weight as being mostly made up of muscles, fat stores, and bones. But there's a lot more to it. In a fit adult person, bones make up 15% of the total body weight. About 40-45% to is left to muscles, about 15% to fat deposits, and the rest are stuff like skin, tendons, hair, and other yucky things. Let's see. That adds up to… yep, 100%. Your lungs aren't twins, they're siblings. That's because they aren't the same size or shape. Your right lung is bigger and tends to weigh more, and your heart is to blame for it since your ticker tilts to the left a little bit. This creates a small indentation in the left lung called the cardiac impression, which is also what funny heart doctors do at comedy clubs. The right lung may be bigger, but it's a bit shorter since it needs to make room for the liver. Doesn't your house have a liver room? Many of your body measurements are quite symmetrical in surprising ways. If you were to stretch out both of your arms, your wingspan, and measure it, it should show how tall you are. Based on these similar measurements, specialists can even produce theories about what ancient humans used to look like. Looks like we've evolved to be increasingly symmetrical to appear more attractive and healthier to attract mates. Hmm. More so, since we've evolved to also walk on two legs, our symmetrical features help us to move around with the least amount of energy because it creates balance. Now, humans aren't natural champions when it comes to the scent of smell, that's for sure. But our noses can pick up about one trillion different scents. Scientists are still performing research on this subject and believe the number may be even higher. Some dog breeds may be able to notice scents somewhere between 10,000 and 100,000 times better than we do, but turns out the best nose in the animal kingdom may be attributed to the elephant because of its staggering number and type of olfactory receptor genes, over 10,000, while humans and chimpanzees have less than 400. We tend to look at our pinkies as our most delicate fingers, but we do have more power in them than we think. Turns out that should our pinky finger be lost or affected, the overall strength of our grip may decrease by up to 33%. The liquid in our stomach, made of hydrochloric acid, potassium chloride, and sodium chloride, is way more powerful than any acidic food you can think of, like lemons, pineapples, or tomatoes. The pH of healthy stomach acid should be between 1 and 3. So if you think about it, it's just below that of battery acid. Our hair strands are strong too. So strong that research is performed on them to duplicate their resistance into human-made materials. A healthy head of hair should be able to withstand up to 26,000 pounds. It's due to a little protein in the hair strand called keratin which you can also find in your nails and skin. Now, only about one-third of us humans have perfect vision. There are a lot more glasses and contacts out there than you'd think, making up about 66%. Apart from different eye conditions, our vision also gets worse with age. 
When we're born, our heads amount to one quarter of our total length. By the time we reach 25, our head will only be one-eighth of it. That's because our heads won't change their size a lot as we grow older, as opposed to the rest of our body, mostly when it comes to the legs and torso. Our brains are these super-powerful computers, and a single human brain cell can hold five times as much information as the entire Encyclopedia Britannica. Maybe you remember that. We've yet to pinpoint the exact amount of data it can support, but in electronic terms, the storage capacity of the brain is around 2,500 terabytes. For comparison, the National Archives of Britain, which keeps over 900 years of history, only takes up 70 terabytes. It's probably the reason our brains need the most amount of oxygen compared to other organs. About 20% of the total oxygen that enters the bloodstream and that's despite the fact that it makes up only 2% of our body mass. Our normal activities, plus the effect of gravity, make the cartilage in our ankles, knees, hips, back, and neck slowly compress. Once you rest overnight, the cartilage goes back to normal. On average, you are somewhere around 0.4 inches taller in the morning than you are later at night. And that's why they call me Stretch. <laughs>